When I was at RSA, I bumped into a CISO of a large bank at the hotel bar. He told me he'd just come from a Fortune 500 CISO roundtable. So what I found interesting is he said of the Fortune 500 CISO surveyed about AI, about half believed that the proliferation of AI would improve security, and the other half believed that it would make security worse and help the attackers more. The CISOs cited that on one hand, it would help them find and remediate vulnerabilities quicker, but on the other hand, they cited it would also help attackers find and exploit vulnerabilities quicker, and that it's creating an entirely new attack surface with an entirely new set of vulnerabilities. And we're already seeing them being exploited in the wild, and it's about to get a lot worse. In fact, OWASP has come out with the OWASP LLM Top 10 Vulnerabilities that includes entirely new vulnerabilities specific to AI. And one thing you'll notice throughout this video is that a lot of these vulnerabilities do not require a lot of technical skills to exploit, unlike traditional application and network vulnerabilities. Now, let's jump in and analyze the vulnerabilities. One of the most severe attacks can create a backdoor in an AI product. So data poisoning is nothing new. It's been around since as long as machine learning, but as you'll see in a minute, it's about to explode with AI. So it usually starts from supply chain vulnerabilities. Basically attackers inject small amounts of malicious crafted data into the data sets that are used to train the AI model. In experiments, this has proven successful against just about every type of AI model. The less severe implications are denial of service conditions from high error rates, like when researchers conducted a black box attack against Google Auto ML. They poisoned a fifth of a percent or 0.2% of the training data in a way that's undetectable to the human eye. And the attack changed the Google Auto Machine Learning's results from 82% accuracy to 69% error. But the more concerning implication is engineering a backdoor, and it can be extremely difficult to detect. Multiple experiments have proven that by including specific attributes of their spam in a few non-spam emails that were part of the training data set, those spam filters would then allow spam emails to pass through when they had those specific attributes. And similar experiments have found that by including specific attributes of their malware in benign software that was included in the antivirus training data, the antivirus would then classify their malware as benign when it had those same attributes. And what's scary about those experiments was that the poison data was a very small percentage of the total training data. And the spam filters and antivirus worked perfectly, except when they encountered those specific spam emails or malware samples. And these attacks have happened in real life. And there were at least four large-scale data poisoning attacks against a Gmail spam filter. Attackers sent millions of specially crafted emails designed to throw off the spam classifier and change its definition of a spam email. And this is possible because Google spam filter trains off of live data. And this attack on the Google spam filter seemed pretty sloppy. It was pretty easy to detect by the surges in emails being reported as not spam. But who knows how many other data poisoning attacks have not been detected. Okay. Technically, these examples were with machine learning, which is a subcomponent of AI, but most AI models are known to be just as vulnerable to these type of attacks. In fact, in an experiment on self-driving cars, researchers placed yellow squares on some stop signs and speed signs in the training data, and then they were able to get the self-driving cars to recognize stop signs with yellow squares as speed signs, yet the self-driving cars worked perfectly except for in those situations. And now we're seeing data poisoning tools like Nightshade and Glaze, among others, that use the attack tactics that we just mentioned to purportedly help artists protect their work from generative AI companies. They insert tiny amounts of data undetectable to the human eye to confuse generative AI models that train off their work. These tools have proven effective against stable diffusion. When just 50 images were uploaded, the AI started creating images of dogs with too many limbs and other issues. When 300 images were uploaded, they started making dogs look like cats. And AI is also being integrated into all sorts of security tools, from antivirus and endpoint detection response, to SAM or SEAMS, to SOC analysis, pen testing tools, code analysis, and so on. So you can see the implications. So the most likely attack vectors for data poisoning are either repositories that developers use where threat actors can post their poison data sets, or if the application trains on data from live interaction or trains off of data from the live internet, that's also a very probable vector. And that probably explains why OpenAI has been very reluctant to give ChatGPT full connection to the live internet. And speaking of supply chain attacks, AI model development is super similar to traditional software development because reinventing the wheel is inefficient. So similar to how traditional software developers borrow code from open source software, use SDKs and other code found in repositories, 
AI developers like to grab pre-trained AI models from repositories like Hugging Face and then fine tune them or train them more for their specific use case. Similar to how threat actors post malicious code or SDKs in public repositories, we're seeing malicious pre-trained models being posted in AI repositories. In fact, JFrog researchers found about 100 models that were uploaded to the Hugging Face AI repository that could enable attackers to execute code and take over the developer system. Basically, the model format uses a file that contains arbitrary code that's executed when the file is loaded, and the attackers just embedded malicious code into that file. And while that one's relatively simple, going back to data poisoning, there are likely more well-funded and sophisticated threat actors playing the long game. They are likely training poisoned AI models with backdoors engineered into them, and then posting them in public repositories for unsuspecting developers to use. And it's extremely difficult to detect a poisoned model with a backdoor in it. This is called a transfer learning attack, and Based on experiments, and depending on how the model is used and how much additional training or fine tuning it goes through, this can be very effective. And we, we likely won't see the consequences of this for years. And now I have to mention one of the oldest attacks that's getting a lot more expensive. Distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks. Now it has much more serious implications than traditional DDoS attacks. Attackers can overload large language learning model or LLM applications like say ChatGPT with prompts. And AI consumes a ton of compute and electricity, making it much more vulnerable to denial of service attacks. And the prompts can be engineered to require even more computation to amplify their DDoS attack even more. In fact, OpenAI has already attributed multiple ChatGPT outages to DDoS attacks. And then there's likely the biggest vulnerability, prompt injection. This, and this is usually related to or changed with other vulnerabilities. Prompt injection involves engineering prompts to exploit logic in the large language learning model, even if they're built-in guardrails. As I mentioned earlier, often these exploits do not require any coding or technical skills. These can accomplish anything from jailbreaking the AI to do something it's not supposed to, like say write malware, to more malicious functions like stealing money, exposing sensitive information, or even compromising the integrity of the application and underlying infrastructure. First, let's talk about a few attacks before we go over how they can circumvent the security controls. For example, security researcher Donato Capitella, hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly, dem he demonstrated a prompt injection attack where he manipulated a bookstore website by injecting prompts into the AI interface to trick the AI into thinking a book worth $8 was actually worth $8,000, and then he tricked it to refund $8,000 to him. Or to get sensitive information out of the model, attacker, an attacker could inject a prompt like, finish this sentence, Jeff Bezos lives at... And since LLMs pretty much work by guessing or predicting the next words based off of the data that they were trained on, you could see how that could turn out. Or you could try to trick the LLM into executing malicious code or connecting to a malicious domain by including URLs or files in the prompt. Or the attacker could engineer a prompt to get a super long response that could, in theory, have too many characters and exploit a memory corruption vulnerability like, say, a buffer overflow or integer overflow. But as you can see, the prompt interface just presents a really big attack surface. In fact, while Microsoft has written some pretty long articles about how guardrails are circumvented, the attack methods are actually pretty simple. In one attack method, the attacker asks the LLM to do something that it isn't allowed to do. And the LLM will reply telling you why it can't instead of just saying no. So then instead of the attacker asking it to violate its own rule, the attacker will augment the AI's logic to circumvent the guardrails, as you can see in the sample prompt injection attack right here. And Microsoft found this pattern to be successful on a wide swath of well-known and well-adopted LLMs like you can see here. In another attack, the attacker circumvents the guardrails by asking the LLM to do something indirectly by encoding the prompt, like including a file or URL in the prompt that contains another prompt that, in a sense, expands the original prompt. In Microsoft's experiments, this wasn't caught by a lot of guardrails. An attacker could also exploit an insecure plugin to circumvent these controls, like Email GPT, the API service, and Google Chrome extension that uses ChatGPT to help write emails in Gmail. A vulnerability was discovered by Synopsys Cybersecurity Research Center that allows attackers to inject a direct prompt and take over the service logic and force the AI to leak the hard-coded system prompts and or execute disallowed malicious prompts all by injecting an engineered prompt. What's strange with prompt injection is it hasn't hit the news much. This is likely because they usually don't involve enough people's data to cross the breach disclosure law threshold. Although as AI continues to become more and more integrated with just about everything, that'll probably change. And we'll likely see a lot of new prompt injection methods and exploits. 
And this video really doesn't scratch the surface when it comes to AI and cybersecurity. We'll likely see new vulnerabilities and new attack methods as AI proliferates. And keep an eye out for future videos about adversarial AI.